If you like learning about rocks, fossils, minerals, and even dinosaurs, there's a great place here in Murfreesboro that can satisfy all your curiosities. The Middle Tennessee Museum of Natural History is still in its infancy. The Murfreesboro Museum is only two years old, but it's already a popular destination for those who love to study science and geology. How did the idea come about to establish this museum in, in the first place? Well, really there was two of us. Uh, there was a gentleman named Louis Elrod and me, and we kind of both were lamenting the fact that there was no natural history museum in Middle Tennessee. And we had actually been discussing it probably over several years. And, and finally, I just went to him and said, if we want a natural history museum, we're probably going to have to just do it ourselves. And so how did he respond to that? Oh, he was very excited. He thought it was a great idea. He had actually had a dream of starting a museum a long time ago, um, but just never actually followed through with it. And when him and I got together, we just took it and ran with it. Now, how big of a building are we in right now as far as the exhibit space? Yeah. Right now, the space we have is 5,000 square feet. Uh, we've got it pretty much packed to the gills as much as we can fit in here. Um, we've got dinosaurs, fossils, rocks, minerals, crystals, um, all kinds of stuff here in the museum. Speaking of dinosaurs, what is that standing there behind you? Uh, right behind me, we've got a Tyrannosaurus rex, T-Rex. Uh, this one in particular is from Fort Peck, Montana. Uh, this is a cast of the original fossil. Uh, the original is kept at the Museum of the Rockies in Bozeman, Montana. Uh, but this is a cast, so it's the exact size, shape, texture of the original bones. Um, this guy's 38 feet long. Um, one of the more complete T-Rexes that's ever been found. What is the reaction when like, maybe children see this for the first time, or maybe even adults for that matter? Uh, we specifically set up the T-Rex so that you don't see it until you come right around the corner. And it's great just to stand here and watch their eyes get really huge and um, just get really excited whenever they come around the corner and see this giant T-Rex. And just as far as you're concerned, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, what, what do you think, you know, how amazing is it to think that something so many millions of years ago was so big? Well, I, yeah, um, I'm kind of late into coming into the dinosaur phase. I think everybody goes through their dinosaur phase at some <laughs> point. Um, but I didn't actually get too excited until I actually went out to Montana and started digging dinosaur bones for myself. And now I'm really, you know, the, the minute details, looking at how the bones fit together, looking at how the bones are preserved, um, and then, you know, going out and finding the bones, that's what gets me most excited right now. Besides the T-Rex there behind you, what else can we see in this room? Uh, in this room, we have all cast, meaning all copies, uh, but we've got copies of some smaller dinosaurs, uh, one called Stegosaurus. We've got a, a small lizard called a Champsosaurus. Um, we've got dinosaur footprints from Texas. Uh, footprints are great because that can show you a little bit more about what a living dinosaur was doing. You're not just looking at static bones, you're looking at their footprints as they were moving. Um, we've got a Triceratops skull. We've got a small flying reptile called a Pteranodon. Um, and we also have uh, what's going to be another dinosaur skeleton called Struthiomimus. We're in the process of actually starting to put that together right now. And of course, this isn't the only room, is it? Tell me a little bit more about some of the other rooms. Sure. We have uh, two rooms of actual fossils. Those include real dinosaur bones that have been dug up in Montana when I've gone there every summer. Um, and we've got uh, fossils from Tennessee, uh, fossils from all over the world. We've got um, not really dinosaur stuff from Tennessee, but other interesting fossils. Probably most interesting fossils from Tennessee, we've got a, a copy of a red panda fossil, which red pandas today are only found in China, but in far eastern Tennessee in the set, near the city of Gray, they have the Gray fossil site, and they found a red panda there. Um, we have a cast of a mosasaur. Mosasaurs have been found in Tennessee. And then we've got all of the local fossils. Um, everything found around here in middle Tennessee is um, marine fossils, meaning they were living underwater. Uh, we've got corals and clams and snails. Uh, sponges, um, these funny looking things called crinoids, um, these squid looking things called nautiloids, just a wide range of stuff. Um, Tennessee is actually really rich in fossils even though we may not have the dinosaurs here in Tennessee. When you first had the idea of putting this museum together, how much of an undertaking was it when you finally decided that yes we want to do this and, and to be able to, to actually stock all the different rooms here uh, and get them uh, pleasing to the eye I guess? 
Okay. Um, filling up the display cases was actually probably the easiest part because I've been collecting fossils for a long time and collecting dinosaurs for about eight years now. Um, Lewis Elrod was a mineral and rock collector and he had a gigantic mineral and rock collection. Um, in fact, almost all of the rock room and all of the mineral room are things from his display. So a lot of it was more just finding out how do you go through the process? You know, how do you start a nonprofit company? How do you get your tax exempt status from the IRS? Um, so a lot of paperwork was done in the background before we got started. And then it was finding a space. And we were fortunate enough to find this space and the owner of the building was supportive of the museum, uh, gave us a great break on the rent, and so we were able to get the doors open. Then we just asked for private donations for display cases, and people would sponsor a display case, and then we could buy a display case, and then we would fill it up. And so that's how the process has worked. And what's the response been like as far as attendance is concerned? Uh, attendance has been growing steadily. Um, our biggest challenge is just people finding out that the museum is here. Um, we're probably one of the best kept secrets in uh, Middle Tennessee. But as people find out about it, they really enjoy the museum. They tell other people, and it's been growing. Um, calendar year 2016, uh, our goal was to hit 10,000 people. I think we were just a little bit short of that. But for our second year of being open, you know, 9,000 people is still a pretty good number. How glad are you that you took the challenge, I guess, so to speak, and had courage to do this now two years later? Oh, well, I love museums. Um, I grew up uh, in Illinois near Chicago, and the Field Museum of Natural History is one of the greatest natural history museums in the country. And so I just, as soon as I moved to Tennessee about 20 years ago, I felt like there was something missing. And it's just been really fun, and it's been a lot of work, but um, I feel like we're meeting a need that has not been met in the area. If you would like to visit the museum, the address is 816 Old Salem Road in Murfreesboro. The museum is open from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. Thursday through Saturday. Reporting from Murfreesboro, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.